Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Elena to Monetize. Today, I have my beautiful co-host, Alpha Wolfie, and we are joined with the handsome Bo Butler. Hello. And Sorry. we are going to get into so much trouble. So without further ado, you guys, let's jump right into this week's episode of Elena to Monetize. Bo, tell us who you are. I, I just figured they all knew who you were. Uh, <laughs> Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you're about, what's your story, how'd you get into porn? Oh, okay. Well, I'm I'm Bo Butler. I uh, I live in West Hollywood, California. I'm from Orange County, though. Uh, how did I get into porn? Well, it was during the pandemic, and I was at Black's Beach, Ooh. and Ooh. I saw uh, two men with a tripod having sex on the beach. Well, a group Hot. a group was around them watching. And I was like, what is this? Like, I asked the guy in the group, what is this? They're like, oh, they have really successful OnlyFans. And I was like, I can do this. I, I can, can do that better I than them. I can do that. And I, here I am, two years later. And that was, uh, <clears throat> the men with the tripod were Logan Stevens and Morgan Thick. No shit. Yeah. Morgan. Oh my God, I love Morgan Thick. You love Morgan. Morgan's beautiful lips. Yeah. Beautiful lips. And he's, he's, uh, I don't know how Morgan identifies. He's he's on our, uh, our our choice talent team over there. So awesome. So um, coming into porn, did you? Um, what were your thoughts? What were your fears? What were your your hopes? Did you just do it because it was COVID, and or you were like, I feel like you're competitive. You're a very competitive yes. person. You're a man. You know, <laughs> there's when you see something that you're like, you know what? Yeah, I could do that shit better. Like I feel like you find motivation from that. And you built, you're like, you know what, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, yeah, I'm competitive. So I, I lost like a job that I worked my way up at, uh, COVID layoffs. And I uh, started this other job and I had to start down towards like the middle. Mm -hmm. And it was like really frustrating kind of thinking like, okay, I'm not going to be making decent money for another two years and I have to kiss ass and da 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 And I was like, ugh, I just don't know. Man, it was like... Um, I like to be around people um, when when I'm working. I don't like to be in, like sitting in front of a, a computer. I don't yeah. know if I'm like ADD or what, but it just doesn't work for me. So, yeah, I heard these people were making this money, and it just made sense. So you, what'd you do? You went and bought a camera. You bought it. What, what was your first? What were the first steps you took? Because <laughs> yeah. well, you didn't start shooting studio scenes first. You started with your OnlyFans first, correct? Yeah, OnlyFans first. Okay. Actually. Uh, today marks two years ago. I shot my first ever studio scene. Yeah, it was uh, show hard. Show hard. Yeah. Raging. Yeah, but I had been doing OnlyFans for like six months before that. Okay, I remember the first time that I shot content with anybody was with Isaac X and T S Jane, and they post. I had just made a Twitter, and Isaac X had posted it, and immediately you had hit me up. Like you and I were yeah. immediately like fucking on each other yeah. like what's going on like when are we doing this you know yeah. and that was over two years ago yes so and we i mean we've shot we bone i've shot scenes together um but i've always stopped i've always stopped you right yeah i think so and then today after this episode <laughs> bo butler will be topping alpha wolfie so if I'll you guys want to see that link is in the description box down yeah. below to watch that by the time yeah. this episode comes out that will already be out as well your first time topping or uh no i'm I'm a I'm verse on OnlyFans. Perfect. Yeah, I uh, yeah I studio like mm -hmm. studio prefers to have me as a bottom, and mm -hmm. I I get it because that's kind of like donkey dicks and and huge asses and like I I have a huge ass but I don't have a donkey dick. So. No, your ass is fucking huge. <laughs> yeah. you, the upper body's already so big. Just imagine the trunk fucking looks like it's thanks. glamorous. You can build an island on it. Oh, thanks, dude. I think your ass is like. It protrudes outward to the back <laughs> the same way that it goes to the side. Like, oh, it's, thanks. Yeah, it's very... That's abductors. <laughs> do you have do you have um, what the dolls... What do the dolls call it? Boy holes? Hip dips. Hip, hip dips, dips hip or dips. boy holes? Some of them boy dance. Boy dance. The boy dance. Do you, do, you have, are you, are, do you have like... Have you worked out enough so that you actually have like I like do hips? not. I do not have a boy dance. That's on the lower back, right? No, 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 no. Right here. Like right here on the side. Oh. You know, like when guys are... Hip dips. What, 
this is this is yeah. why a gate like porn we're always covering this cover the fucking yeah 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 that hole right there i think so yeah i think so because some guy like michael boston his are like michael boston has like the ass of a female on on a man and things he's, fucking he's popping shaped like a like a horse like a <laughs> horse's ass with that huge yeah so we started at porn but let's let's go back let's go back to um We'll keep it as Bo when Bo was a young boy. <laughs> Back when Bo was a young boy. How did Bo know Bo how, was when, gay? Yeah, thank you for taking it right <laughs> out of my mouth. How did Bo know Bo was gay? Well, I... I and knew, when? I mean, as soon as we're old enough to like start getting turned on or thinking about love, mm-hmm. yeah, 100%. So probably like, I think the first time I remember really putting the thought in my head was I was probably eight years old. And Ooh. thinking like, oh, oh wow, I'm gay, yeah. Damn. So That's like really mature thinking. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> so do you believe when people say like you're born gay? Well, they, they say like, okay, you, you, no one's born gay. You decide that you are gay. So do you like? How do you like? What are your thoughts on that? Do you want to? Because you knew you were gay from a little kid. Yeah. So it's kind of like you weren't even interested in the world yet. So it's clearly something that you probably would say you were born with. Or do you want to know what I really think? What do you really think? So yes, I want to know in, what you really think. <laughs> in like, in like ancient rome and like mm-hmm. ancient greece men would just fuck each other because oh, yeah, they, they were away at like the army and stuff and they were horny and they would fuck there was i you know in in ancient rome they would have like twinks that would blow the gladiators and and swallowing was a sign of uh, bravery like literally that was an actual thing oh, wow, that's so- i think i think swallowing cum is still a sign of bravery yeah it's a sign I'm of bravery transition and go back in time and just go to war <laughs> yeah and then and then maybe i'll come back a swallower because you know? yeah. <laughs> i'm such a pussy then well when the men would return from war too they would cut the women's hair so they would get used to having sex with women again like women would cut their hair to like help the transition so it's like i honestly think that that men are on a major spectrum but I think organized religion and societal pressure shoves them into a box mm-hmm. and you just sort of like go with it. I, I think everybody's. I always think like, I feel gay. like, yeah, I feel like <laughs> if you put enough people, I feel like if you put two men in like a room together and strip them away from sex where they were like, the only way you guys can get off is with each other. Eventually they would cave and do it. Oh, Absolutely. they'd be in love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they'd be best. Best. Yeah, it's like, okay, you're stuck on a desert island for the rest of your life with another man. What do you do? Because think about it, like, anal with a girl is the same as anal with a boy. It's the same thing. It's the exact... A hole's a hole. A hole... Uh, <laughs> <sighs> you know what? I'm going to be straight up with you. I've only had anal sex with one cis female. I've had sex with a lot of men's butts and a lot of... A few less doll's butts, but I... They all... <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, unless if you're in, if you're in shape, like if you're in shape and you're a healthy person, yeah, they all feel the same. But it's when you start getting into like the more out of shape people and heavier set, where the the the, I'm like, dude, some people have fucked up like the fucking entrance. I'm like, how do we get in here? Like, oh yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I bet. I know. <laughs> well, one time I even ate. A, I don't know if, if we can say this on. Um, you oh, you can say whatever okay. you, you can want. Say anything. Well, one time I ate a really muscular guy's ass. And I, my tongue couldn't reach the hole. The the the, the oh, butt cheeks were so firm and muscly that it was like face pressed against, and I just couldn't reach it. That's wild. Yeah. Super muscle butts. So what's your ideal, like, do you eat ass, and do you enjoy it or no? It's my favorite. Okay, so do you enjoy, like, a nice jiggly butt? Because I know there, there's so many types of ass when it comes to men. Like, yeah. You have, like, the, you have, like, the really jiggly, jiggly butt, but then they're in shape. They're not yeah. fat. They're just in shape, but they have a jiggly butt. And you have like the really toned muscular ass where you kind of touch it and it's just kind of like pure muscle and you're kind of like, uh uh-uh. Yeah. Kind of hard where it's just, yeah. It's like a manly butt. So which one's your favorite to kind of just shove your fucking face in? I know this is like very Goldilocks, but like the, the middle of that. Like, because there is, is the middle a, of that? There is a the, middle the, the, of that. Yeah, like the perfect area. It's like, hmm. it's like the muscular butt that's got some jiggle to it. I've never seen that. I've, I've only ever seen like it's either really firm and fit or it's either like really jiggly and juicy. Really? I guess you got to find a guy that was like on a steroid cycle that came off and didn't work out for like four <laughs> no, weeks. I think it's like, I think it's like genetics. I yeah. think it's like genetic. Oh, genetics has a huge factor into doing all into butts. I know. Yeah. I naturally have really big calves and no ass, so I have to work my ass out three days a week. And I'm like, just get pumped. <laughs> I just know. get pumped, and your ass will never go down. What's that? Is it like a BBL? It's what I have, so it's kind of like. 
obviously I was built like a Dorito at one point, like shoulders <laughs> and like it went was like it was down, yeah it was like in cave <laughs> it was fucking in was cave. It more like this though, you're more like a like a linebacker, like a box. I what I know I. I I wasn't built like that because I never really had that big of a broad shoulder. Yeah. But, like, I definitely didn't have anything down here. So then up here just looked even bigger. Mm. And so I kind of just got, like, these... It's kind of like they inject allegedly silicone. Uh Uh-huh. From Home Depot? No, 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 no. It's like... It looks like oil. If I could... Honestly, it looks like lube. Okay. Like, it looks like... It looks like clear water-based lube. Silicone. Silicone. Yeah, that's what it looks like. But, like, again, we don't know what it is because she says, Oh, it's silicone! Right. But for all we know, it could be just be anything that doesn't like blend in with water, so it adds volume. Where'd so, you go? Well, it was kind of like a water mouth right thing. There. It was in my room. I got oh wow a black market. So she, you kind of like you kind of have to like know people to like know this person. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, who the did it? Are stingy with it. They're, they're like they, uh-huh. they you know because if you got a fucking fish ass body and you're just fire like they don't want to share that they want to yeah. keep that for themselves mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and so like and plus like what she's doing is like super illegal so you don't want to pass her around too much right and so i knew one person who knew the connect and so she came over and so you're like awake the entire time mm-hmm. and so you lay <gasps> in your stomach and then she injects you and the needle's fucking fat Dude, 18 gauge <gasps> oh is that the needle size 18 you know. gauge. oh god it's yeah. like a drawing needle Dude, oh but it's so thick because the 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 product is like an oil large. it has to Holes. It has to like go through like the needle. I accidentally stuck myself with an 18 gauge once because I, I, I forgot yeah. to switch it to a. And I was like, "Ow, what's wrong?" It's I, like I a, did that in Mexico when I was like, I ran out of tests and I was like, yeah. I had to go to pharmacy and it came in pre pre mixed yeah. ones and I'm like, that's all they had. Dude. Yeah, I'm like, I was like, all right, I'm literally stabbing myself with a fucking knife right now. It's terrible. No, and so then. imagine getting poked like that in your butt with no numbing, <gasps> 18 times. <gasps> Per each cheek. Oh my god! Because she puts it around and she has to like stab it like deep enough to go through your muscle. Oh! Because she injects it in your muscle. So like when your butt's getting poked in the muscle, mm-hmm. it flexes. Yeah. And so imagine and like twitches. Ima- yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So imagine if you're flexing your bicep and yeah. I just kind of like stab the needle right there in that hard flexing bicep and she has to mm-hmm. break through that. Oh god! And while she's in there, she's pushing product in there and this product is creating volume as she's like pumping your ass under your muscle so it's wait, in the they, muscle do they do they shoot it all in or do they have to like is there a special technique like the way like like how you know how they do fillers in your face like mm-hmm. how they have to like push it in no like, pull you out can't pull it out because it like shoot it all under so i've seen her pump my friends and um so she like stabs it in there and then she has to she just has to like press it. and then there are times where like it's like it's so hard you have to like she it. has to just fucking stab it in there Ooh. and it's just like so no numbing no numbing i'm awake Does the whole it time burn when it goes in it hurts the so it hurts while it's happening so here's what the pain is the real pain comes from being stabbed and then when she's filling you up but once it's in your body it doesn't really hurt so it's much like fucking lip filler it's, it just feels tight and yeah. you're kind of just like okay that feels really taut yeah but like it only hurts during the process yeah but like it, the whole thing takes about one hour and 40 minutes. <sighs> I know that for a fact because I started a movie and then by the time the movie was done, I was still getting pumped. Oh my so God. So it took an hour and 40 minutes of just pure pain. But like once you're done, you, can have to, you don't have to get it again until you decide to do it again. Worse than a tattoo? Oh my God, yes. Because a tattoo is just like surface level. This is like going yeah. in your muscle. It hurts. She has no tattoos. Oh, she doesn't know. She's got, <laughs> oh yeah, what? <laughs> uh, well, in Mexico, I want to go down to Mexico because they actually do... I, I haven't like, I mean, I've got like Botox, but I haven't done like, but there's filler they put in your butt. Mm-hmm. Like to, silicone. it's not, it's not filler, it's, it's silicone. They say it's filler, but it's just silicone. Okay. So this is what, this is what you got, but they're doing it here. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I, do that. I joked about it. I'm like, babe, should I get like 300 cc's in each ass? Yeah. My lady gets her product in Mexico. So she like drives it over the border. Ah. Uh, she brings it back here. Gotcha. Yeah, well, it's it's filler. I mean, stuff does talk. <laughs> it, it's filler. Okay, so filler is um, a gel that is designed to break down over time. Uh huh. So then, it's kind of like in theory, in a few years, it's gonna be broken down. Yeah. Now, silicone does it mix with water? Mm-hmm. Does it mix with anything? So it's just gonna sit there forever because your body can't break it down. Wow. So it's kind of like what goes in must come out at one point. And so it's kind of like implants. In 10 years, you remove them. Mm. So it's kind of like with filler, like if, yeah. like filler can break down. Your, your body can break down over time. But with silicone, if it can't, it's kind of like what are you going to do in 10 years? But what is it? What yeah. And then 20 years. What's what is it though? Like what's It's it? hyaluronic acid. I can't say it. Hyaluronic acid? That one. That word, yeah. But it's a gel that can, your body can break down over time. Okay. 
densifying mm-hmm. fillers. Cookies. Have you had lip fillers? You had, no. No. You, uh-uh. Botox? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't do Botox. Well, I want to try it again. I'm like, maybe if I like, yeah, I don't know. I'm already fucking freaked out about it. I, Why? It's the crunching that scares him. No the little, the little crunch when they inject your, mm-hmm. you know, the crunching sound. Mm-hmm. I love that sound. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's, like, yes. It's Why the does that thing do? Because like, I can. If you do trimix, I, dude, I can inject my penis. I was, I was yeah. an IV user for 16 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, what else? I, my whole body is black with tattoos. But it was something about, you, you know what it is? It's when I'm not in control of the needle. Oh. Hmm. That's how it is for anything. Though. Yeah, it's like, and you're like, we were like fucking around the other day. She's like, babe, would you care if I like sounded your urethra? I'm like, <laughs> I've like, <laughs> I've like thought about doing it to myself, and I'm like, I could never, I wouldn't feel right. I, I want to be in control of anything that's going into my body for sure, unless it's a dick, of course, or a big dildo. <laughs> or a big <laughs> 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 okay, so I remember when we were talking at AVN, we we're talking about like sex stories, we we're talking about sex experiences. <laughs> And we we're talking about the first time we saw a dick. When was the first time you saw a dick? Like, when's the first time? And what were your what was your thought process seeing it? Were you why were you kind of were you kind of like oh, why do I why do I like why happen? am I turned on by this? Where thing? was it? Where is it in person? The first. How about the first time you you not just saw a penis, but like were like turned on and touched it, put it in your mouth. Like, when's the first time you like had like an interaction with a dick? Uh, I was. 12 or 13 you know so sixth grade sixth or seventh grade yeah seventh grade yeah and did you have straight friends yeah it was my straight friends yeah so you sucked your straight friends dick always yeah that's (laughs) are they that's not really straight of them to be honest that's Uh, but but there's they're still straight now so they got their it's just getting (laughs) it's it's just a mouth you know what i mean what's the game mouth to mouth yeah yeah Right? I mean, fuck, dude. That's awesome. So, <laughs> I w- comment below. Who's the, like, what you, what's your guys' experience with sucking a first dick? When's the first time you sucked a dick, babe? You already know. It's my cousins. Well, okay. Let's get this straight. Everybody, you guys need to understand that she's Viet, and it's not her actual blood cousin, first of all. Let's start there. Not a blood cousin, just family. People that are family together, Asian culture, Mexican mm-hmm. culture. No. So, basically, I'm... You're not family. You're friends, right? We're neighbors. We're neighbors but... neighbor, next door neighbor. Not even fucking family. Just so, guy. basically, when... We were younger. They moved in right around the same time we moved in, which we were kids. And so I'm, I was like, oh, who are these people next to, lives next door? My mom was like, oh, those are your cousins. <laughs> those are your cousins. <laughs> those that's, are cousins. That's pretty funny. And so growing up, my mom was like, oh, those are my cousins. And then I find out we're not even related at all. <laughs> it's just like one of my mom's best friends. Yeah. That she moved in the same time as like my mom did in the same apartment built, 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 building. And then she just said to our kids like, all right, those are your cousins because like, we're the same age. Yeah. And so I grew up thinking that was my cousin. So in my head, like, oh, yeah, those are my cousins. But we're not related at all. It's crazy. Yeah, I was reading the comment. So I was like, oh, my God, Elaine is disgusting. She had But even then, like, if I thought they were my cousin, I still did it. I'm kind of sick for that. But she, still. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a cousin, whatever. It's a cousin. He, still, you, weren't even, you were both underage anyway, so it doesn't matter. He's only ever, like, three, two years older than me. Oh, my God. I'm 14 years older than Elena. Come talk shit to me about it. <laughs> are you really? I'm 14 years older than her. Oh, well, I think I was. Uh, well, it's it's how old does uh, do I think he is? Right? How old do you think I am? No, I think you're like 25. You're right, 24. Yeah, she. And but her her energy and her maturity gives like 30 yeah. year old like grown ass mature woman. Yeah, in public, on YouTube, I don't know about that, but in public, she's an amazing person. Mm-hmm. I feel like on YouTube it's kind of like when the camera goes on, you really can't be yourself. Elena oh, comes on. Yeah, because like what when you you're mean? like when you're huh? What do you mean? So for example, in person, I'm really respectful. You know, you've met me at um, in person many times. I I, I say, how do, do I care of myself? Mm-hmm. It's like that's who I really am. I need to present like when I'm meeting anyone that's on his side of the like the picture. Like for example, his friends, his family, his, his coworker. Friends? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go ahead and rewind that because thank you for saying that. His fr- <laughs> It's not, no shade. Like, I really don't have that many friends. I just, yeah. I, I, oh, have friends. <laughs> you have friends. But no, for example, like whenever, he, whenever he brings me around to meet anyone on his side, yeah. I'm thinking, like, I need to behave myself because I'm representing him. So I can't act a damn fool. I can't be a cunt because, like, it's going to, like, what does that say about him as a person if he's for with sure. someone like that? And so yeah. it's kind of like, I always make sure to kind of, like, put on my best foot forward. And anytime that he brought me on set, I'm really respectful. So, yeah. In person, regardless, I'm really a good person and I'm really well mannered. But when the camera comes on, it's kind of like 
it's people from all over the world watching Get and to be entertaining. When, oh, of course. Yeah. When the camera comes on, you need to catch their attention. Yeah. So that they come back. So you need to be entertaining. You got to say things yeah. that are just like you wouldn't say in real life because kind of like it's not even about like being fake. It's kind of just like putting on a show. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like everybody does that. Like we, when they when they go to their conferences and what do we do? At our, what do we do at work? Oh yeah, the whole thing. We fucking put on the best performance of our lifetime the every whole day. Thing, you know? The whole thing because mm-hmm. you know you obviously you're into it. You're having sex with hot people, but right. there's a lot of cutting. There's a lot of stopping and starting. There's a lot of breaks at strange moments, and so you just have to rev the energy back up and and exactly yeah you cater to the energy. You got to know your audience. It's yeah, you cater just, to the exactly. energy exactly, and so it's mm-hmm. kind of like that's how I am on camera. I act the damn fool because it's kind of like I want people to come back and keep watching because people love that shit. They eat it up. They, they talk do. shit about it, and like bad press is good press, nah. and so like whatever works. It gets my bills paid. So, but in person, it's kind of like anyone that I'm meeting on his side, they're not paying my bills. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what they think about me. So it's kind of like I have to either way make him look good. You yeah. Know? And vice well, versa. Well, I think you definitely do that. Oh, thank you. You definitely, <laughs> definitely have succeeded. Thank you. Dude, if you, you met me two years ago, people met me a year ago, even they're like, damn, Elena really like helped you out. You know what I mean? She really, really gave you a Really pulled the old gal together. She, she really pulled me together. She really did. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is the way I dress, the way I carry myself, the way I think about yeah. about life and like my future. So it's definitely, um, yeah. You're also a great asset yourself. You guys are a really cute couple. Thank you. I love it. I love it too. I feel mm-hmm. like we compliment each other pretty well. For sure. You know, and we're always trying to like find that next best thing or that next new story or just you know, I don't know. It's fun. We we. Uh, I was. You remember Regis and Kathy Lee? Yeah. I was. I was showing like her like different like morning morning show tacos. Okay, oh, like, she probably wasn't even fucking born. <laughs> so rude. She's all. Go home. She's all, Who the fuck is that? I'm yeah. Like, I'm like, wait, are they married? I'm yeah. Curious. She's like, what year is this? 1987. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, no, it's no, it's old clips. Yeah. yeah some old. Yeah. God. We were watching those old clips, dude. I'm a 99 baby. Oh my goodness. <laughs> J Lo was singing "Waiting for Tonight." I was around for that. Yes, I was around for that one. No, you were born that year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were around for that? And I'm like, I mean, I was in the world. And your daddy's nuts, sag. <laughs> the year I was born, the top song was Wind Beneath My Wings. But never even heard that. <laughs> never even heard you that. You are the wind yeah, beneath you know that? my no, wings. It's, it'll make you cry. It's from the hit film Beaches. A bunch of beaches in that movie. Uh, are you in a relationship? Do you have a boyfriend, girlfriend? <laughs> yes, I'm in a relationship. I live with my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. What's that like being in porn? Is he is he porn star also or no? He is a uh, consultant. He's a Ooh, sexy. he's a tax consultant. <gasps> Ooh, even sexier! It's yeah. tax season. I need him. Yeah. I, can you like help me write off a bunch of shit? Please? Uh, well, I <laughs> wish he's like uh, I, he's international tax law, oh. so he he doesn't really know much about like local. I don't know about nothing here because yeah. Oh, so I'm, I'm the tax queen. I'm like always on that shit. Ooh, why is it international? How does he? Get, how do you get to the international level? That's wild. Um, because he's an international man. I actually don't really know. I don't really know. I mean, I think it, it's just the the department he ended up. Yeah, in. yeah. It's wild. I know when I hear that international tax consultant. I know. Internationally tax that ass. It's about it. <laughs> I know, and he's so sweet too, dude. I was really like intimidated to go on the first date with him because I was like, "Wow!" Like I was looking at his Instagram, and he just travels to all these places, like like gay fancy places, like Mykonos, and like I'm like, "Oh my god, he's so well traveled!" And it says, law "Oh, he's that type of gay." Is it so yeah, he's so law did he kind of show you because like I noticed you didn't really travel like that prior. No, and so he kind of showed you that. Yes, he was definitely the person that made me feel confident enough like because all of the first places i had gone he had already been like he i've spent the most time in london and he lived in london for almost 10 years oh wow yeah so i was like he showed me the tube system and like taught me all the stuff so yeah and he the tube what's the tube the tube is that that like the subway yeah that's okay they call it the tube because it's actually way it's literally you're in a little circle like it's way smaller than a subway. It's wow. a little circle. Is that like, um, I can't say the word, 
claustrophobic. Like claustrophobia. Claustro- claustrophobic. claustrophobic. Is, uh, it, is, that, is it very much as giving that? I will say on like the busier lines. If it's smaller than a subway, then it's kind of, I imagine how tight it is. It's smaller than a subway. Yeah. So like if you get on a busier line and everybody crams on that thing, yeah, it's intense. Damn. But that's that's just French culture though. Or I mean uh, like, like English culture. Like yeah. riding a bus, riding you know, oh, yeah. transit. Like that's... It's abnormal. I wouldn't say abnormal, but it's not yeah. common. Like we we have to drive a car. You know what I mean? There's like streets are th- are way more narrow. Like yeah, it's, it's just different in England. There's no public transportation here. There, it's you're like basically penalized if you have a car in in London. It's like they make it really difficult for you to own a car. That's kind of like um, owning a car in like New York. I right. Feel. Exactly. Like there's no point. Which New York is like that's kind of rude because once you do European public transportation and then you go to New York, you're like. This is not it. Well, Europe, they have it on point there in Europe? God, so much more on point. Like, oh, wow, okay. The cars come like every two or three minutes. You have bam, bam, bam. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, I haven't even York, built I'm, up like, the courage. Waiting for 10 minutes for a fucking subway. Yeah. We haven't, we've taken the subway. I've taken the subway in Boston. Or no, in Boston, it's called the T. That no, was it. It's the T in Boston. Uh, but I haven't. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I haven't really had a necessity to ride the subway in New York, but I'm also. I, I mean, I've ridden the fucking the train in from Boston or from DC, but I've not. She and I rode it in from Jersey. Mm-hmm. It was nice. It's, it was it was my first time experiencing. It. I was like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. It was fucking fast. It we was took, really fast. We took. We flew. I was like, we're taking a plane, train, and automobile today, babe. We yeah. flew flew to New York, took the train, or no, flew to Jersey, took the mm-hmm. train into. Uh, 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 where were we going to? Uh, uh, Penn was, Station. Penn yeah. Station. Yeah. How do you get around New York? We. Walking. Oh, we were walking, dude. Oh. Yeah, and it's so funny because like you're walking so far, but it doesn't feel like it. No, it doesn't. That's the craziest thing is like, yeah. like the when we walked to the fucking museum. Oh, when we walked to fucking Central yeah, Park. Central Park. Yeah. That's the equivalent to us walking to like what, like Westminster. Like that's how far <laughs> it was, but it felt like nothing. <laughs> what neighborhood were you staying in? We were in Hell's Kitchen. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I feel like I stay in Hell's Kitchen too, and it's really far from everything. Besides, like, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. You went to Chelsea. You went and stayed with... Uh, you saw... Um, that's Chelsea? Yeah, that's Chelsea, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, you know, we... we uh, well, she's Hell's Kitchen, though, too. But there's so much good food there, though. Yeah, it's really good. And all the dispensaries. <laughs> I love Hell's Kitchen. No way. Porn, <laughs> porn sets always get nasty and dirty. But you know what? I get the vibe that Bo's very professional on set. I try. So, he, like, I can see why, like, there wouldn't be any juicy sort because he's just, like unproblematic no respectful and just very like i'm here to work 100 percent. unless you think otherwise yeah <laughs> unless you've heard I'm like why is you laughing huh unless right. you've heard so, something right. so <laughs> almost it, it was march 2000 march 2021 uh, and me and bo were in palm springs and we got slated for a fetish movie oh yeah we got <laughs> this bitch. so we've you know, oh, been talking for a while um we hadn't shot together yet, yeah. but we've been talking and we're like, oh, we're going to fuck, we're going to do this and that. But we never just got around to it because I was San Diego, he was Orange County. Anyways, so we got slated for this film called Wrapped and it was a... Um, that's my favorite one. That's your favorite one, yeah. Ooh. Why is it your favorite? Because his haircut. Oh, it's, it's great. great. He looks great. And More his his jacked. body was just like, he just looked like, like I would cheat on him for that man. <laughs> <laughs> that he was in that scene. Like, well, wait until you hear this story. You won't, you won't want to fuck him after. <laughs> <laughs> but he just looked so good in that scene. Yeah, like, his haircut, his body, the way that like, yeah. you were just so beefed up. It was, yeah. it was nice. That's my favorite scene because he just looked so good. He's super hot. So I mean, how many films did you shot at that point? That was my second. At that point, I think maybe I was on four. Okay. Yeah. So uh, again, I I knew nothing about BDSM, nothing about neither like, of us did. None of us did. They're like, hey, you're doing a fetish film. You in for? I'm like, okay. Have you ever guys. been a dom? I'm like, dom. He's Internet. like, well, Alpha's in my name, so I'm like, sure. sure. I'm like, that's fucking that works. <laughs> that's how it works I'm like, does that mean like I get to like dominate all the dicks? In my yeah, 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 yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so we get we get there, and it's like a fuck. They have it set up like it's a uh, like a doctor's office a kill surgery room. Room. yeah there's plastic everywhere like like someone's gonna get murdered here and the yeah. tools they had for me to use on bow 
these aren't like normal sex tools. There's no. like forceps that you like, like that. That tool was is for a vagina. Yeah, not an. That's asshole. to like open a vagina up, and mm-hmm. that. But like you know, the, the girls love to use it for uh, just like opening the asshole up, and yeah. so you can pee in someone's butt. Just fun stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There was that. What else was there? There was the um the spike ball. What is that? That thing? That, that like there's like a. St- what are those called that you put on your back of your Spec- fucking stirrups? Oh, the, Stir- the, 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 the cowboy boots, right? The cowboy boot things. Mm-hmm. Little, Spec- little speculum? Speculum. Speculum. What was that even speculum. used for? Speculum. Oh, for the horses when you ride horses. You yeah, them, right? yeah, it's just to like, you know, kind of like get their attention or whatever. And then it's also been repurposed as some sort of a torture pleasure device. Yeah, so you like, you're, I'm like, what are we doing with this? They're like, just, it. I know, I'm like, it has spikes on a on a wheel, and yeah. I'm just rolling it all over Bo. Just like so, and they oh, hand- so he was in that scene. So he was the Talk sub. About in that scene. Oh, we'll pull it up and watch it if you want. <laughs> I'm just too busy looking at you. Yeah, you got to watch the whole scene. Of, okay. Yeah. So I'm saran wrapped. Oh to yeah, a table. You're, that's right. You're Can't saran move. and duct taped. Were you duct taped or just saran wrapped? Just saran wrapped. Okay. That was Thomas or Isaac. I got that duct, yeah. duct tape. But yeah, he's. Saran green saran wrap the thing and so uh, what else do we have they had the speculum they had those forcep thingies and, and then the candle prod, uh, the, oh the electric cattle uh, electric prod prodder. and then also the candles <laughs> yes the candles are the worst you say something? you like to tell everybody what your name is <laughs> <laughs> sniper everybody so the can- so these candles are they're called low they're called low density or like low flame candles low or whatever. Heat low heat. Low yeah, heat. Sex so candles. Sex candles. So they're not supposed to hurt you at all. Oh, so, you, so when you so pour you, wax on them, so it's you like. you light it and like you like, so the, the wax drips down. It'll hit the person. And if, you're supposed, if you're far enough if away. If you know how to use them. Yeah, so like they're not supposed to hurt you. Mm-hmm. So I was doing it like I'm lighting it and I'm doing it right above his skin right here. And it's just dropping. And also the temperature. It's kind of like a shower hose and you get closer to the hose. It's yeah. hot. And when it's out here, it's a cooler. Yeah, but like, it's like whenever I put the water hose directly on like you. It's like a, fl- a little bit cooler than a flame directly on your skin. Well, because it's supposed to have time to cool. To cool in the air. As like, it, like a shower. When yeah. I like, when mm-hmm. you bring the shower away, it like, gets cooler and hotter. Yeah, no one told us that. No one told me that. Did you burn bo- poor Bo? I All over my body. His, he had polka what dot. Were you like, were you like, ow, Yeah. Well, I was like, ow. Ow. And then I was like, well, am I being dramatic? Yeah, is this I, just sex candles? Like, is he it'll acting? Be fine? Does it actually it's hurt? Like, it's like actual fucking regular candles. Like, we swapped the wrong one. That's Bath and Body Works. Pretty, yeah. pretty much. It felt like yeah, just no, regular candles. I'm pretty fucking sure candle. those were just regular candles, bro. I, don't I think know. <laughs> well, it's these, these fucking. They didn't have the budget. Like, or we're going to do a fetish movie. Did I hit you at all? I didn't hit you, did I? No, you zapped me with oh. the little thing. Oh, yeah. The ta- yeah, that oh, one. Oh, and then the glass dildo. And then I got the. and I Then he put a hollow. Dildo in me, and uh, no, well, it's a oh, hollow right. butt hollow, plug. A hollow butt plug, and then up, and I squ- I poured a whole thing of lube in your asshole. Took an entire bottle of silicone lube and just <laughs> gluck 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 <laughs> in my asshole. And then when I sat up, it just poured out all over everywhere. Oh, it was fucking wild. It was a wild I want to watch the full scene now. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's honestly it. one of the, it's a pretty, like. Pretty I'll link nasty, it down like, below, you guys. I'll scene. link the video for the full link down below so we can all watch it together. Yeah. <laughs> we, watched, we watched it together when we were in Palm Springs. Yeah. We, we, were, we were laying in bed. We watched it together <laughs> at CCBC. Yeah. And we were like, oh, like, this okay. Is what were your thoughts on it? Seeing the final work together. Um, that was the first time I saw any any uh, porn that I sh- I was like, I got amped up. I was like, this is cool. It's beautiful. I was like, this is rad. I can't wait for the next one to come out. And now like fucking two hundred have come out. You know what I mean? You yeah. Shot so I mean, on top of your content and studio scenes. How, like how many? How much experience do you think you have behind the camera now? There's with, probably with sex? if if we count because I think uh, if I go on my OnlyFans, I'm at like over two hundred okay. OnlyFans videos. Yeah. And then studio, I think I'm at like 40, 50. Okay. Maybe. Um, yeah. But all, but see the thing with you, every every film you've been in, all top notch. Thanks. All top rate. Thanks. I all tried. Fu- dude. Okay. So let's go here. How many how many awards have you put together in the last two years? Oh yay! Uh, I, I always see. picture you because like I always I'm always like. I think about all the fucking awards you've gotten, and I'm like, I wonder if he's like, because this is what I would do. <laughs> I got all these, I'd like fucking have them all stacked up behind me and just be super like fucking narcissistic about it and just be like, I'm a fucking king. You know well, what I mean? like, look at all this shit that I What put I do is <laughs> I, I have my filming room at home because uh, we have a two bedroom and I have one. My boyfriend doesn't like when I fuck other men on his pillows. 
fair. fair so enough. we have a filming room where then those pillows get covered in somebody's ass sweat. <laughs> but so on the wall, oh, he doesn't like to rest his face on other. He dudes doesn't like assholes? other people's oh. feet and assholes. Oh, oh. What? You love other people's feet. I mean, yeah, but like on your not pillow, on the, not on my pillow. Like the pillow's supposed to be sacred. No, yeah, that's right. pillow. Right. We have right, a, we well, have a sex sheet. You know. Yeah. Well, and that's how he treats his bed. Like he washes his sheets constantly, makes it every morning. I'm that's not me, but it's nice to have somebody to do that for me. But um, so then on the wall of my filming room, I have uh, shelves with all my awards on them. Hell yeah! Just just like you know, because it's kind of like my office, and the bed is my desk. Yeah, those are accolades, the thing to be proud of. You know what I mean? I I I'm stoked on it. So so far, it's at. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> he wants you. He wants you to play with them. He's lying. Like, look how he lays like a slut. <laughs> he always lays like a slut. Like, like he spreads his fucking leg, and I'm like, you're a boy. He's stretching those the, hips. The dog at the bottom. Do- he's the, the dog look at him. He's Maybe like, that's why he was abandoned. I think he, yeah. Because he was gay. I think he might be. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's yeah, laying right next to you. He knows you're topping anyway, today. I think. <laughs> Like me next. He's like he's like I heard you guys speaking English over there about having sex. <laughs> hey puppy. Yeah. He's like yeah, I um, think like nine, maybe nine ten. Okay, so wait, we have four cyber socket, three grabby. Uh, you got three grabbies last year. Yeah. Oh, wow. Fuck. Two gavians. So wait. Okay, I was lost. Count. We're at. He's like, there's so many. I lost. Wait. <laughs> okay, so no, we're at nine, and then one straight up gay porn. So ten. Ten total. Um, so yeah, you got yeah. thanks this okay. this year. You got one gave you in and you got one last year. Or did yeah. You, okay, because last year like favorite bear, and this year you got what was it? What did you get this year? You got uh, favorite bottom. Favorite bottom. Yeah, that makes That's sense. <laughs> it's funny because in in real I mean, life, like a whole bottle of lube, you better be someone's ass. favorite yeah. bottom. <laughs> <laughs> whole bottle is glup glup. I can. Well, he's a really there. Bose is cute. You know what I mean? And you have You're, such no, beautiful no, eyes. No, you know Bo, I mean? like, Bose really like very cute. Kind of just like he's manly and like. Muscular, but, it's kind of just like, oh, oh, but you look at his cute. eyes though it's you know I've, I've, I've i'm not gonna lie i've seen you on 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 the gram lately and i'm like did Thanks. you get you got like sexy or something dude like your your eyes Thanks. got pretty i don't know what it is well, i just learned how to take my picture mm-hmm. oh that's really important because really i take your photos important. and they look beautiful i know I, I used to take my own pictures i'm like mm-hmm. you know what it is too natural light is key mm-hmm. i just a beer uh which, just <laughs> wait what <laughs> the beer yeah. natural light <laughs> <laughs> now natural lighting like oh okay. yeah 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 it's, it's so key. much better than studio light i will say yes for 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 pictures for some reason like the iphone like you'll look amazing in real life and then the moment you snap that picture it's like you can see the glare in the with the studio lights but yeah natural light is just like fills everything up and even makes my muscles pop more than like a, a ring light mm-hmm I think it's fluorescent lighting because sometimes the fluorescent lighting can get a little interesting. But like, we'll be out and I'll like take photos of him. And I'm just always having him stand in place, and like yeah. the photo looks amazing. Oh, versus like, good. like photos I've taken of him outside in public always looks way better than the photos that we take at home. Yeah, and the lighting just hits differently. It hits differently. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. So, what are your plans for the future for this for this year for 2023? I know you just got back from. You did a Brazil trip last year, and, yeah, and um, South America, Argentina baby. for a little bit. But what's on the? Um, you have to have something planned already. You already have your calendar mapped I up. I do, your, yeah. I do. For at least uh, through May is is pretty mapped out. I uh, I'm thinking I might finish strong on my Latin America tour with Mexico, Ooh. and just like go, you know, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico City, and then just be like, all right, here's six months of you know latin american content um yeah and then i have uh europe all booked so the the european oh. grabby awards are on uh is that april. right before that's right before ours in chicago uh, right before yeah, yeah. So that's april like 21st okay yeah so i'm i'll be there and how do you get nominated for the internationals uh well is it I'm, mainly just international uh guys that are getting nominated yeah i don't really qualify for that because you're american yeah like so like chris could get nominated like chris damned right well no or, i think or do you literally have to like, live there well you have to be in european porn so got it okay basically like the european directors and their projects and european studios and their projects so got like it. if i worked with alter sin which i really want to for this reason because i would like to be nominated for a european one 
Um, he's Alter the, Sin is the name of the studio. Uh, Alter Sin is the is the name of the director. Okay. So different. Uh, he's based in Barcelona. He's amazing. He does stuff for Men dot com. He does oh, stuff for Falcon men. sometimes. Okay, so he's a freelance guy that that they gets contracted out for all sorts of different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Gonna do probably get there on like April first, and then just do London, and then hit hit Spain and collab, collab, collab. So it sounds like. I heard you mention earlier, you try to plan your thing out so you can, by the end of your trip, you've shot enough content so that it'll flow through enough so that that's actually paid for. Yes. That's smart. Oh, yeah. So I try, really smart. I try to shoot three or four months of content in about three weeks. It's kind of like when escorts work and they're like, oh, yeah, like they try to make the, all the, like, the money that they make back for the hotels mm-hmm. through clients like right. that. That's how I make my, yeah, that's mm-hmm. why I always get deposits. Mm-hmm. 100%. Get deposits. I always pay for my hotel flight. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, obviously when it's really cool because when you're in a different country, depending on the country's like work, depending on like the, the culture of the performers, because it's, it's different in so many different countries. If you're fresh meat, everybody's on you and you're like, oh my God, you can just like work, 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 work. And I got four months of content. Three, probably three and a half, four months of content in three weeks in Brazil. So by four months, that means releasing one one video a week. Uh, I release two a week, one or two a week. And probably like I shoot for six to eight a month. You shoot to release six to eight a month. Wow, that's why you're doing so well. Yeah, that's free. Then I I charge for three, so I have like three pay per views. Okay, like so and how, are you are you how much is your subs- your subscription per month? Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. And then, so you offer five free full lengths? Six minimum. Six minimum. full and Usually by, eight. Those are, those are like 20 minutes usually? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you'll do a pay-per-view? Three, two, two or three pay-per-views, depending on depending on the month. Yeah. And what's your rate at that? What do you charge for that? Uh, for VIP members, which just means you have your rebill on, uh, it's eleven ninety nine, And for... Everybody else, meaning you don't have your rebuild on, it's uh, thirteen ninety nine. How do you know if you, if someone has rebuild turned on? So you go up to the top, and in your messages, it will give you the option send to everybody with mm-hmm. rebuild on, yeah, okay, about. or send to every, and then or just send to everybody, okay. Yeah, so you send one message with one price to the rebuild people, and then another message with another price to the other people. Do do the re- do the rebuilders and the fucking non rebuilders know that they're getting different prices? Yeah, I let them know. Okay, just yeah, so everybody knows. Yeah. Like, hey, if you want to get some better prices here, just step it on up. Yeah, for sure. Click that rebuild. Uh huh. I think it's so crazy how like sex work has been like like OnlyFans and content collabing really kind of just like opened this whole new door of kind of just like a whole yeah. different like. I, I didn't want to say work because kind of like it's always been like porn, but now it's kind of just like we have this new, like before when it's kind of like it's porn. It's work, dude. No, I know what I mean, but it's kind of like, it's like, it's more fun. Oh, it's work. Yeah, relax. <laughs> <laughs> like, please don't hurt me. <clears throat> but like before, it's kind of just like, the only porn stuff there was was kind of just like going to work on set porn. Yeah. But now it's kind of like we have this new like content collabing where it's kind of mm-hmm. like, before people would collab for like YouTube videos. Yeah. But now it's like oh, you. Really? That, that was the thing. If you were like a YouTuber, like, hey, let's collab, let's have each other on our podcast. Oh my god, yes! But like, it would be like, oh, like let's get together, and make like a mukbang video where we eat different food, or like, <laughs> oh my god, like when there's oh, like. Oh, that's what that is. I, I was like, what the fuck is a mukbang? A mukbang is when you just sit and eat. But like before, the only like content collabing we ever heard, like when you think of content collabing before, it was mainly just like YouTube collabing mm-hmm. or like doing something PG. Like, oh, like there's like a YouTube convention. We're all going to be here. Let's get together and film like a vlog. Mm-hmm. Or let's film like a would you rather video or like something fun together. But now content collabing is like going into sex work as well. Towards kind of, let's yeah. get together, meet up, fuck, film it and make money. Yeah. And it's like, it's so crazy because like, it's just interesting like well you guys opened the door for us the youtubers i mean really if you think about the evolution of all of this the evolution of the influencer and porn influencer youtube influencer it started with youtube yeah it's yeah, really that was cool right that was kind of what trailblazed it so that's pretty iconic on your end too because you i feel like you you kind of monetized on that right when it kicked off smart what, what year what year did you start your youtube um 2015 
2015. You were even born. You were born then. <laughs> I did it. I did it really. <laughs> I did it really young. Yeah, I did it at 13. And then wow. my first collab was Angela Vanity, and like it was like collabs. Like no, it was Cassidy Lynn, and then we collabed. And it's kind of because like, the whole part of collab was kind of just like two people were coming together to introduce like them to like a different audience, like mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. audience mm-hmm. meeting your audience. Yes. Okay. And then later, but now it's kind of like we have that like adult content audience too where it's kind of like it's so interesting like mm-hmm. I, before like my thoughts were just like let's travel and then like film content me and like a video for YouTube what can we do that's fun but now it's kind of like let's film content we fuck yep. yeah. it's so crazy right well, well what we're doing now is both we're, we're doing a podcast and then we're, we're shooting content fuck. afterwards mm-hmm. so it's yeah it's so funny because like <laughs> we really are going to be that podcast where whoever we film whoever we interview there's going to be a sex tape right after. Scared. Everyone's going to be like, I don't know about that. They're going to try to fuck us. Like, <laughs> Did you but film with Dante? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my first Eiffel nice. Tower. My first three Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, oh, my, my God. Amazing. Threesome. I know. Because I, I was like, always, I was, I always had like offers for people, people like, be like oh, can we like me and my friend like threesome you? And I'm like, no, because I don't really like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But like, I was like, I trust him. And then he trusts Dante. Dante's. I didn't really know Dante that well. So I was right. like, I'll take your word for it. And then, yeah, I got Eiffel Towered. You're just a good girl. You're like, this is my first Eiffel Tower. I know, because I, I don't really do... I'm really, like, as explicit as I am when it comes to sex. I'm actually really vanilla. Like, I'm Honey, actually so 25, boring. please. No, like, I'm really, like, vanilla. Like, I don't swallow. I don't... I fucking hate giving head. Like, I, I'll, I'll suck a dick for, like, 30 you, seconds. And if it gets hard, I'm like, put sister. it in me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, I don't... Really, I'm not, like, that much of a slut. Like... I like uncut. Real. You like to get fucked. Yeah, but, like, there are girls who are like, oh, I love sucking dick. I love <laughs> the hum. I just love... Uh-huh. They love it. And I'm like, I can never get myself to that point of, like, loving sex that much. I love uncut dick. I'm super big on smells and, and you like taste. That, you like that that uncuts. Yeah. I know what scent he's talking about. But like, <laughs> like, no. I'm like, what? No. So what, when you're a European man and you have an uncut dick, that scent is oh, way like, different. Like, yeah. Like Chris Dam's dick. Yeah. In yeah, yeah, sense. yeah. His, he's like, he's even like really, 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 really clean. Like you can tell he probably like hangs out with his skin back. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uncut stuff. You wouldn't, yeah, you, you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get For it. All you fucking white people that yeah, are. You wouldn't fucking... get it, but my Europeans get it. No, a lot of Europeans are uncut. It's like it's That's like. Why I love London, It's like baby. oh my god, it's like you're the, not cut. I'm uncut. Yeah. No, like when you're uncut, <laughs> when you're un, you. when you're uncut on Grinder, you're like a god. Oh. Like if you say that you're are uncut, you oh, wait, if you go on Grinder, you're uncut. They love you. They're like, <gasps> uncut. It's, it's kind of like it's you're exotic. like a, a god to yeah. them if you're uncut. You yeah. might as in well America, be. We fucking mangle penises. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent mangle. I mean, growing up, because th- like everyone that I was around was circumcised, and yeah. so. When there was a kid that wasn't, they always made fun of it. Like they're like, "Oh, really? yeah!" They're like, "Oh, look at your dick. Looks like an elephant dick. Like, like <laughs> looks like a worm. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? looks like an earthworm. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. mean you're both worms. worms. We're ant eaters. Yeah, it was elephant just... trunk. <laughs> and then like growing up in a family where if your family doesn't teach you about like anatomy and like the way things work, you're just like, "What the fuck is right. that? You know, that doesn't look like my dick, right? You know." Um, but now now that I'm an adult and I, I understand, I'm like, dude, I see how sensitive people's cocks are. They're oh, uncut. Yeah. I'm like, I want that. Yeah, it's, like, I gotta like fucking get to really get like. I know. No, yeah. it's so like there are times where like he has even tried to like rub me out and I'm kind of like ow I'm like no because the thing is kind of like they're treating it like it's a raw cock okay but like you can't do that you kind of have to be a little bit more you have to glide the skin mm, you yeah. glide well, the skin yours, up yours and is down different the because it's not it doesn't go all the way down yeah so. mine I've never seen the full tip of my dick ever yeah I mean so and it's crazy because my foreskin can't go all the way back well mine was the same way I had to start when I started having sex to top was so painful yeah. because of it. Oh my god! I thought I was the only one. I was like, my dick has issues because I could never pull it back. Yeah. And I see all these uncut dicks, and I'm just like, how's your skin just? Pull? I'm like, how are you doing that? It took, it took time. You have okay, to you see, have to I train it. You that. have to stretch it. You have to basically you have to be having a lot of sex. Which by the time I was 21, Baby, you want to start topping me all the time? <laughs> see, the thing is, I didn't know that. I really didn't. So I just never ever pulled my because I. Again, I don't top. I don't do anything. So I only ever use my dick to pee. Yeah. Okay. And so my dick is never really pulled back. When I jack off, I kind of just like keep the skin on it. Just, like, the best place to, to start is the shower. Is to just like because the warm water loosens everything up. And honestly, yeah, it's, it's from topping. Because I would top my first boyfriend at like 1920. And it would hurt so bad. But the more I would do it, the less it would hurt. Yeah. It's like my dick got used to being 
yanked all the way back? Here's what I did. So hmm. I topped twice. The first time I topped, it was um, with a condom on. And yeah. that really helped because the condom kind of right. just like I would pull the foreskin back to where I only, I could mm-hmm. and then wrap it. Mm-hmm. And so like when I would fuck when I did fuck that guy, it was kind of just fucking the condom, but it kept my skin yeah. in place. And then when I fucked the second guy raw, it hurt because like as I was like putting it in, it was pulling the skin back even more. Yeah. And so I was kind of like, I remember the first time with the condom on, I came. Yeah. And my friend was like, how did you come with the condom on? But you didn't come with when it was raw. Because only that's the only time it I did hurt. it was twice. And then. I was like, the condom just didn't hurt me. Right. I bet the dude's butt was really tight, though, too. It was really tight. But, like, I thought, again, like, I thought my dick was, like, weird. And I, I was kind of like, because I couldn't pull the foreskin down, mm-hmm. I, I thought about it. I was like, well, I kind of want to get SRS. But I thought my mm-hmm. dick was, like. No. I thought my. Well, you don't want a pussy. You, no, 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 no. no. Kind of like this. I've seen how other people's dicks function. And because I couldn't pull my foreskin down, I thought my dick was kind of, like fucked up like malfunctioning and malfunctioning just like, yeah. and so i was kind of like, like a faulty cock yes and so, <laughs> and so for the longest time i was like i was like oh i want to get srs but i'm scared like what if they go to operate on me and they're like oh my god this dick's fucking not functioning right we can't do srs on this because we can't pull the foreskin down yeah. so not turn this this into a pussy sorry because in my head my down. because in my head my dick wasn't operating like how a normal dick should well, be if operating. you think about like vaginas they stretch over time after use Mm-hmm. So I hear. I've actually never seen one in person. Uh, oh, what do you want to see? <laughs> <laughs> it fucking slaps you in the face. <laughs> you're, you're about to see something that looks close to a vagina. Your butthole? Yeah. Yes. Ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> so his butthole does not look like our butthole. I've seen it. Yeah, our buttholes look like this. <laughs> yeah. His butthole looks like this. <laughs> like, it's the funniest thing yeah. ever because, like, it looks like a fucking pussy. Well, I actually... I filmed with uh, a straight guy yesterday. He had oh, never so he is straight. Okay, he is straight. I told you he I was. was. Like, There's no fucking way he's straight with that earring. But then that's the trend. Oh, Max, he's trend. super straight. Really? Yeah. So what did you guys film? Uh, just honestly, the first time we ever filmed, it was just us jerking off and like. Like gay baiting almost, yeah. Yeah, like me playing with his feet. And then the second time, and then like he sat on my face and not like sat on my face like where I'm eating it, like literally put his body weight on my face. And then I like jerked off. It was like a dumb, dumb thing. Yeah. And it actually did really well. I was like, oh, okay, people love this. Got a bunch of likes on my on my OnlyFans. Nice. So <clears throat> I want to ask you two this. Um, Max. His name is Max, right? Yeah. yeah. Max. Okay. I keep thinking it was Mark for some reason. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's because the K is there, so it confuses me. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, him being a straight man and like doing all that, do you think it's possibly gay or sus? Because when it would a would a would a straight man really be doing like all a straight, that? Straight man. Um. Well, I I can I'll comment on this because the way I grew up, I said, I don't know, I really don't know because I don't see the people that I grew up with, but I I don't know because there's it's all in the way that you the lens you see the world out of the way growing up and the mm-hmm. the shit that's around like if that's all you know is straight 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 when anything outside of that norm comes upon your life you're like what is that that's too weird that's gay so I'd say he's just more. He's just more open. I don't know, but I when I saw the earring, I'm like, he's definitely like, like. Well, appearance wise, that's whatever. But like, filming content with Bo. Yeah, choose to do, uh, to choose to film with a gay man. You're you're definitely you can't identify as straight. I'm gonna say that right now. I, I don't think you're gonna. I can't identify as straight because you've actually fucked a man. I I fuck guys all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I can't say that I'm straight, but I'm fucking attracted to women, but I also love getting fucked and I, and I when I like somebody like Bo and I are friends. Like we're we're going to film really good content right now cuz we've worked together and we know each other and You guys have like chemistry as friendships, chemistry. Yeah. yeah. So, but I I wanted to ask so what yeah, is it sus? Is he Well, what, I mean, you share yours. Yeah. What do, what, you, what think? do you think? Yeah. I I I think it, I think they're totally straight. I mean, well, I think there's also like such a such a spectrum, right? Like, like you know, like I always I don't know. It's so interesting to me, and I'll just speak really candidly because it's like when men, I would call a man straight, even if he's with a doll. You know what I mean? Because he's straight. She's a woman, yeah. right? But then if there's there's fluidity there, there's there's like there's the fluidity and the slight openness to not black and white that is you know i think just part of our culture now and i think men are less uptight rigid afraid to like disappoint their dads 
You know what I mean? And they're like, yeah, sure. I kind of like stuff in my butt. Like, yeah, I'll make a video of me putting stuff in my butt. You know what I mean? And I don't really think, I don't really think that's gay. Like I actually film with a lot of straight guys now and I trust that they're straight. You know, I really do. I mean, do I think that they're enjoying, like, first of all, I didn't put anything in Max's butt. It just was sort of like a muscle worship. And then uh -huh. I did like, cause his subscribers have never seen his asshole. So I was like kind of showing it to them on camera. That's like Sam shock. We had, we had, a, we had a straight guy on the other day. He was yeah. Like, he's like, I saw my asshole for the first time of the day. Yeah. So I was kind of just like showing him out of pose and like showing off his asshole and stuff. And so it was like fun and like jerking him <laughs> really? off from behind. It was like, just like a fun kind of like a, Oh, he let you jerk him off. Yeah, well, you know. It's so now, is that a little gay? Because you're letting another man, like, fall on, like, jerk you off. I, I'm going to go ahead and, like, I'm going to go with this vibe now because it's a gay the, act. It's a gay act. It's, but it's a very gay act. I'm gonna, it's, it's a I'm gay gonna take act. This I'm going to take this road down. It's fluid. It's just a, fl it's a behavior well, of fluidity. Let, How about let's that? say this. So, I identify. Gay talk. I identify as very gay. Like, I would. Really? With, I a, no with, a, with, a, with a pearl necklace like that, <laughs> player? Damn. I would sooner have sex with a trans man. Than a trans woman. Than a trans woman. Because what I'm attracted to is masculinity, mm -hmm. not what's there. Right? So, so it's, it's yeah, that's just, that's just where I'm at. So. Um, I feel like you would, too. Like, I would what? You would rather have sex if you had the choice or had to. Trans man or trans woman? Trans man first, obviously. Yeah, I'm for not sure. Dude, the opportunity has presented itself so many times sure. of Britney wanting oh, to fuck dog. me. Oh, no, no. Britney, wants, sure. Britney, Britney, wants. Britney wants to fuck me so bad, I'm but like, sure. I just can't do it because like, I just don't look at Britney and see, I want to fuck you. Because right. like, she's a girl. She's a she's too damn much of a woman that I'm kind of like, I can't, I'm not into this. It, it just doesn't click in my head as something... I just don't want to. Like, it's so interesting. It's not like I'm, like, grossed out or mm -hmm. anything like that. It just doesn't – femininity doesn't click as hot. Yeah. You know? And so I would much sooner go, you know, towards, a, a like, a biological pussy. So what it comes down to is kind of just, like, people kind of look at gay acts as kind of, like, body parts opposed to kind of, like, attraction. Well, I was going to say that if I did try mix and I was making enough money to, like, if – a huge female content creator came to me and was like, Hey, like I want you to fuck me on camera and I have, you know, 10,000 only fans subscribers. It'd be great exposure. Bink. I'd fuck her on camera, uh -huh. please. Yeah. yeah. So the gold, the, the gold star still remains uh, platinum. I'm, I'm a C-section baby. Oh my Platinum. God. Never even been near Never even. One. Your t your face hasn't even touched the inner Nothing. linings of a vaginal canal. Nothing. That's literally me. I'm a, like a female version I'm of a butler. Oh, damn. <laughs> you I would, are. <laughs> for me, I've been eating pussy since the moment I came out. I've had it all over my mouth and everything. So couldn't even. If, if I had to pick one out of a lineup, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it. What is? I don't even know. Pick the best vagina out of a lineup, or even just a what vagina. <laughs> like, what does it look like? Yeah, it was like. No, it's so funny because whenever I look at post-operated pussies from yeah. like trans girls, I'm always like, "Babe, what does this look good?" Cause yeah, because I, yeah. I, I don't know what it looks like. So I'm kind of just like, I'm like, "Does this look good?" Yeah. And he's like, and he's like, "That one looks alright." I'm like, "They all look so different. Yeah. Like, what's what?" So I'm having him like great like which one is the best post-op pussy I have to, yeah the, the, for, again we were gonna do that when with the dolls were on the other day we we weren't gonna do it wasn't gonna be like a touch to or anything I, we were gonna look at we were gonna ask stassi and, and lila to do a little you know a, what was it uh what were you calling it a pussy voting or some shit or like just a pussy co comparison pussy rating. pussy rating that's what mm. it was but again for me i'd have to like know what the interior feels like and like you know what i mean because like he's like he's like oh yeah i can't really I tell can't i need to yeah. fuck these girls to see <laughs> and then i'll tell you <laughs> educational purposes i gotta <laughs> fuck them first to see what's Solid the best be able to be like, what's the better look one? wise honey look wise which one looks more realistic okay well in irl like sis like you can have two vaginas one could look really good and the other one look really terrible but you can go inside of it and the one that looks really good could not feel as good as the one that looks bad i don't think she gives a fuck about that part right yeah it's mainly, <laughs> i'm just asking which one looks more legit that's, that's not on her. what about the smell okay then go right ahead and shove your face in it for all i care like <laughs> yeah then i hope you don't mind when i do a dick rating on straight dudes and just fucking i need to suck it to really i need them to come in my mouth to see which one feels the most uncut legit. i want you to suck, suck those, some uncut suck those dick. Dick. <laughs> first right now and tell me what his taste like compared to mine baby <laughs> Tastes like minty it, soap. Taste it, grab it. I can't. Me and Bo aren't attracted to each other like that. We're, we're sisters. Uh, we're sisters. <laughs> we're, we're, sisters. We're, we're girlfriends. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sisters. So, I mean, in my experience in gay porn and being around a lot of, of uh, guys like you, like, you are you give like the strongest masculine fucking meat fucking mode, dude. You're like, you know, he's right. a he's a beast. Yeah. But then you talk to him, you're the sweetest <laughs> fucking <laughs> You're so sweet but Thank you also you have too. a side to you where you're like you you like to be by yourself, you like to do your own thing. Yes. You know, you're very like Remember um what did you say to us? You're like in order to get a contact me you have to text me just two words. If it's yeah, anything if it's more long, just straight up. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Cause we started doing that and like you answer now. Yeah. If it's like <laughs> Tomorrow, 5 p.m., perfect. You'll respond. You, like, but if it's more than us, yeah, dude. Because <laughs> it's true with this guy. Because, like, I, I used I don't to text know him. If like, I'm like a little autistic or something, but like, at stimuli, I'm like, rap shutting down. You, <laughs> I literally shut down. You're and, just driven. You're fo- you have so much goals and so many things you're focused yes, on. Anything oh, that deters huh. you from that, you're like, fuck that. You know what I mean? And that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's and why I, you're so successful, dude. And I, I hate disappointing people, too. So if somebody asks me a question and I have an answer that may disappoint them, my mind is like... It's better just to just don't never say anything reply. at all. <laughs> it's so crazy, so right? Everybody watching you, this, if he hasn't replied, <laughs> if he hasn't replied, it's because whatever you asked me, I was busy that day, yeah. and I didn't know how to throw out an alternative. Sorry, his boyfriend can't well. get a hold of him sometimes, so he really can't. And they live in the same house. <laughs> Bo can't even get a hold of himself sometimes. I can't <laughs> get a hold of yourself. We can't. I'm sure you've already talked all about you, but. Would love when did you start transitioning? Oh. You want to interview me? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. I never had this before. <gasps> really? Never. I'm so oh, my God. I want to know about you. I'm always interviewing people. The dogs on the thing. There we go. I'm always interviewing everyone. I, so, yeah. I want to know because I am super in love, and I have been before the Unholy song, but with Kim Petras. Mm-hmm. And, I feel, and she transitioned, I want to say, like... 14, 16? I know she had her full sex change really young. That's when... That's when yeah, there's a lot of controversy mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. Yeah, so so I want to know about you. When when did you start to transition? Um, cross dress at thirteen, mm-hmm. and then transition on like pills at sixteen. Mm. Yeah, so it was like in high school still, but I had a really good childhood upbringing, so it's kind of like I got bullied once in middle school, and I never did it again. Never got bullied in high school, only middle school. Because that was here in Orange County. Mm-hmm. I was in Westminster. Really didn't get bullied here a lot either. Yeah, for some reason. Interesting for being gay, and I I came out at like thirteen, mm-hmm. thirteen, fourteen. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so when somebody transitions with pills, what does that what does that look like? So basically, you're putting a pause on male puberty, and you're going through female puberty. Wow. So it's kind of like you're going you're on spironolactone and estradiol. So the spironolactone like holds back like the testosterone, mm. and then it allows like the estrogen to swim through. Amazing. So then your body kind of just like goes through female puberty. So you're like how a woman a girl would naturally go through female puberty imagine that on us so like mm. we get breast tissue our yeah. face gets softer the mosquito bites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. we get our face gets softer just like Looks as if soft. we as if we were going through female puberty just like that how far along in in male puberty were you were you like a late bloomer i was a late bloomer so like that's why Perfect. i never really grew too much five two so i never really ah. grew too much i didn't really get too masculine in the face yet yeah and being asian helped too so like by the time that i did transition i was already still like I hadn't really fully went through male puberty. Yeah. And so like I like I kinda stopped it right at the yeah. good part before it even got too worse, you know? Yeah. I don't even know if my balls dropped, did they? So if I were to start taking hormones, how long would it take for me to look like a girl? Um, whenever we just had to go get surgery. <laughs> oh, so the hormones won't make me look like a girl? I mean it it, it would, but it just wouldn't make you look that passable. Because you you're already very very masculine, and like, so <laughs> you've already developed, huh? And like, so did Kim Petras probably start the pills like at like twelve? Super young. That's why she looks so damn good. You uh, know? I, yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. And uh, her singing voice is so high pitched because she never really went through. Yeah. Her, vo- her never voice never dropped. Yeah. 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 His testosterone is what. Gives you such a little such a high voice. voice. That's why my so voice is like, <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot, honey. You got a lot. <laughs> There's a lot pumping <laughs> through these veins right now. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Fuck yeah, you do. God cool. damn, you're fucking. Uh, fun fact: my estrogen is through the roof right now. Though. Is it really? I have to take it down, 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 down. Wait, what's it at right now? Sixty-eight. Oh wow. Okay, so what's like a normal number for guys? For guys, it should be at like a seven. No way. No girl, like a twenty-three. 
Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it should be low. Uh, What's yours? Uh, Mine right now? I couldn't tell you because I haven't had my... my uh, when my, you my had level. it last, when what's, what was When it? I first got my levels tested, my fucking testosterone was at like a 320 or something like that. And you're and not my, doing TRT? And, and my estrogen was at like 45. Oh, yeah. That's high estrogen. Yeah. I had high estrogen and low T. So you're not doing TRT? I was for a while, but I got off of everything because... You know, I noticed that it was really fucking with my with my mindset. I was stuck. I was always stuck in the mirror. I'm like getting bigger, fucking really out looking great, but not internally and mentally. It was not like you look the way I look at it. Like it's, and same with dolls too. If you're not good on the inside, if you're not like if you don't love yourself and you're not content with the way you are, you could be the most beautiful person. You could be the fucking biggest dude jacked, but if you don't know that on the inside, you're not going to see it in the mirror. Right. And that was how it was like for me. It took me a minute to really like. So I was like, you know what? I need to like start seeing me for me. And then um, I don't want to th- like. I was just not thinking straight. I was more paranoid. I was like always thinking that people like. I don't know. Just dumb. It was. It was affecting. You were thinking my, people were out to get you. Not. Not like that. More I like. Was. I have been. Oh really? I, I fucking hate you. No one's kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was. I have been. You were right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. God damn it! I was right. I was right. <laughs> No, no, I, I know exactly what you mean, but you know what helped me with that is Lexapro has helped me so much what is with that? that. Lexapro is, is that anti anxiety and depression is like yeah, combo? It's an anxiety. It's a serotonin reuptake uninhibitor or something. SSRI. Oh, it's an SSRI. Okay. Yeah. So I, there's no way I could do this industry without being on Lexapro. It was like the moment I, I started Lexapro after my last big breakup and then within like a year I was a full fledged porn star because I was like, you the, weren't sad anymore. I, the anxiety was gone. Like my social anxiety was gone. It was like, so it, when you say social anxiety, like being around a lot of people like, or talking in groups or like, what's that like both? Like I used to freeze like in a situation with new people because I would be like, oh my God, are they thinking I'm stupid? Are they thinking I'm annoying? Oh my God, did I say something wrong? Like the whole time I was so in my head and so anxious that I was like miserable and like not present. I'm like that a lot, just in general. Maybe I should get on meds. Honestly, the best <laughs> the best thing I ever did for my like self-assurance is TRT and SSRIs. <laughs> but so you have to, you got to stay on, you have to stay on test now. Well, I had to anyway. My my levels were at like two eighty. But you're not you're not running it like you're not taking a thousand milligrams a week. You're just like no. yeah, like some guys are. No, no, no. My actual TRT is uh, I think a hundred milligrams. What? Her titties. <laughs> Wait, why are they doing that? <laughs> it's like you're going, but they're not. <laughs> they're like so deformed they need help like, no they're not let's later when she takes That's her shirt muscle. off she'll flex and you'll see the the fucking I have four tits what do you mean I have you'll see it's like I, my tits divide into like two on each tip they, they, oh they no or some shit. because it's like under my muscle yeah so it's like weird my, my pectorials <laughs> Pect- my, pectorials. my <laughs> mom and my sister my they've had to get there's redone so many times it's so hard but and you have to pay every time you get them redone right yeah you pay double even if the doctor fucks them up to fix them you have to pay for a whole nother boob job that's crazy because you're paying for the anesthesiologist and then you're paying for the surgeon's time you're paying for everything else the only thing that you're not paying for is the implant because they'll literally they'll, they'll literally cut it out and then they'll literally pop they'll it back in. back in ridiculous no they'll just wash it and they'll put it back in what the fuck? I don't want no washed fucking titty implant. I want a new one if I'm getting fucking the whole Then you got to pay for a new one. That's crazy. Is that how much anesthesiologists are? Like $10,000, $20,000? Oh, yeah. Okay, so when I went to get my boob job, my anesthesiologist, because they broke it down how much everything is. Mm-hmm. So I think one implant, it's like, um, they break it down. So it's like my total was like 8000 mm-hmm. So each implant cost this much. And then the anesthesiologist was like, I think around like a few thousand. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you're paying for that mainly. You know what I would have done? I would have fucking gone on Amazon. I would have bought one of those fucking expensive breastplates and cut those titties out of there and fucking put it right underneath <laughs> you. 300 bucks, baby. So so you've been on female hormones for 10 years? Do the math, babe. Is that it? She's 24. She started when she was 16. Oh. So she's been on for nine years. Or excuse me, seven years. Mm-hmm. 
one on seven. But you've been a, you've identified and thought that way. Oh, for the longest time. Yeah. So Adeline Fox was never on hormones. No. Are you serious? She was a crossdresser. Damn, I wanted to fuck the shit out of that crossdresser. <laughs> was this your drag persona? No. So Adeline Fox was like, but when I became a, to take the mic. <laughs> so Adeline Fox was someone that I was like, I was like playing around with. Me. I was like, okay, you know what? What am I gonna go by? What am I gonna go? By? What's yeah. my new name? Now that I'm gonna be a girl again, a girl, not again, just a girl. And so I was like, you know, Adeline is cute. Fox is sexy. So I did Adeline Fox. Cute. Super and, cute name. Mm-hmm. And later, um, I had a, a boyfriend at the time, and he called me Adeline Fox for the first time, and I was like. Who the fuck is that? Because yeah. that's not me. Yeah. Like, at first I was like, oh, that's a hot name. But when I heard it being called and like, addressed to me, I was like, ew. Like, yeah. that's like, I don't have any, like. You have no connection to that name. Yes. No. I have no connection to fucking Adeline. Who the fuck is Adeline? Yeah. And so I chose Elena at the Vampire Diaries. Cute. Have you seen that? Yeah. But it was an A, though, wasn't it? It was an E. Elena Gilbert. Cute. And so I was kind of like, I watched her show my entire life. She was someone that I wanted to be always, like, just cute innocent and then i was like i want to be elena because I, I have a connection to the character and then yeah. that's why and i was like you know this is cute yeah got elena and i stuck with it ever since didn't you used to spell it with an a at first and then you changed it to an e i changed it to an a only on dating apps oh when did you do your legal name change um 16 Hell so when yeah. my parents got me on hormones in that same year they did everything for me what a great family i know they were there my they Amazing. were both there like my first appointment and then after I was on hormones, they're like, hey, what's next? And I was like, name change and sex change, like on the ID. So they literally got a bunch of lawyers, did that. And then I got everything literally done down to my ID by the time that I was like halfway into high school of junior year. Did you see that thing that the Republicans were trying to like spread this false narrative to like a um, this is in like a Senate committee. This was like an actual Republican senator and a doctor testifying about trans uh you know, young. Uh, when, when you should be giving hormones. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to the trying age. to talk about that, and they were talking to an actual trans doctor, like a doctor who, who was trans. trans yeah. yeah, and they were like, "Do you know the overwhelming uh, evidence?" They were like trying to push that there was this overwhelming evidence of like regretful um, transitions, but it's really like that's such a false one narrative. percent yeah. is the actual evidence, and like people that get knee surgery. It's a something like a twenty percent regret rate, <laughs> like something like the regret, knee surgery. Yeah, the people regret more getting knee surgery than they, they do transitioning. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like I feel like when it comes down to it, no one is ever pointing a gun to anyone, being like, "You have to transition now." Yeah. It's something that someone does. They do their research. They go to a therapist. They do all that. They take it upon themselves to like go through the whole process, knowing what you're fucking doing already like you yourself did that on your own yeah. so it's kind of like you can't blame the rest of us because right. one person regretted it yeah. right it's kind of like me like getting fucking ass shots knowing right. it's gonna kill me knowing it's gonna do this knowing it's gonna do that right. but it's kind of like they're, you're gonna take blame everyone else be like oh well elena regretted it and it killed her so we're gonna have to stop it entirely it's kind of like she knew what the fuck she was doing walking yeah. into it you know what i mean yeah. but like that I get it. It's like detrimental to someone's life, but it's kind of like a detransition. It's kind of like it all goes onto the person. I feel it's right. kind of like absolutely, yeah. That's all. That's all personal choice. You can't mm -hmm. blame. You can't blame, dude. And we know if you can't that take. Oh, yeah, you can't yeah. take away someone's right to transition at a young age because they want to prevent male puberty. Right. All because one person didn't do their research, thought it was, you know, shits and giggles. Like that's like that's fucked up. I feel like if anyone is transitioned, they have they should have the free will to yeah. and I take it up on themselves. Is that even a research. real thing or is that like a fake a narrative? No, a uh, this idea that there are people out there that do it like on a whim. Uh huh. There, there we know of, of a few. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. Because look at it like this. Imagine, ima you're but like young. You're fucking hot, bro. You know what Thanks. I mean? Imagine Thank if you. you were ugly, an ugly gay boy. You know you and you knew it. You think like, oh, and I'm you're like, be dude, I'm like, think about your future. You're like, I'm probably not going to get a hot guy ever, but if I can transition and become a beautiful woman, then I can fuck straight guys. See, and there's people that do that. There's people that transition and start that, and then they realize that they were just doing it just because they fucking. It was not an like action. That. It wasn't who they identified as. It was more of an outside influence making them feel good for pleasure seeking aspect. And then hmm. once once that time was up, and once you know that that fucking card's been spent, they're like, oh, tapped out on that. And then they got to go deal with all the fucking issues of of detransitioning and like because you're like literally going your hormones and your mental mind state are connected so strongly. If your hormones are off, like that are going through menopause. 
Usually not very happy. Women that are on the period, not very happy. Whoa. Guys that are fucking up and down on their fucking cycles, assholes. Well, tell me about it. When I was on low testosterone, I when when I when I had low T and didn't know it and high estrogen, <clears throat> this was like right after I got sober. I for the first like two and a half years I was sober, didn't have a stitch of muscle on me. I would work from nine to five go home and sleep i had no energy you're just tired all the I time had no energy no sex drive was just so tired and i thought Couldn't like, get oh, hard this is life like you know outside of drugs like damn yeah sobriety is not that rad right and i thought like maybe i had totally fucked myself up from the drugs like mentally or something my, uh-huh. my pleasure your pleasure sensors, yeah. yeah which i did but but it turns out it was super low testosterone and then as soon as i got that Handled. I was like back in the gym, like it was just. Isn't like it crazy how night like, and day? As soon as testosterone is like back in a man's body, like immediately we feel so good, we feel so confident, we're like ready to like wake up early, start the day, seize yeah. the fucking moment, you know. But like as soon as those hormones are off, and we're like, yeah. it's crazy how much hormones affect men and women, yeah. but especially the, our drive, like I, I us heard, wanting to go out there and make money yeah. and provide for ourselves or our families, like. You got to be balanced. I heard somebody say that TRT is gender affirming treatment, and it is one hundred percent. You know what I mean? If you're you think affirming your mat. Your your. Um, this is my male gender. Think about and I. Yeah. I think about that. I I look. I when did you start TRT? Right when you right two out two years after getting sober, right? Yeah. So twenty twenty eight. And immediately, so, so I'd say probably within six months, you noticed how much more of a man you became. Oh, yeah. I was back in the gym. So, and, and I always tell guys, guys ask me this all the time. They're like, bro, your beard, like, dude, how'd you get, how'd you get like that? Like just random people. And I, I'm sure you get the, I'm like, listen, it's about having your fucking hormones balanced, but you also yeah. need to understand that testosterone is what makes a man a man. And if you ain't, if you don't have a beard, you ain't producing much testosterone. Right. Go get on tests and I promise you, you'll grow a beard. Right. Like, bro, like what kind of chemicals would you put in your face? Nothing. <laughs> I fucking wash my face with Shiseido and use some fucking <laughs> some serum and that's it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's. The simple thing of just getting some tests in your body, so test booster, or you can go on a, you know, do a little run with tests and see what happens. Yeah. We had a guy on the other day that hit me up about it, and um, people were also scared of, of using needles in their butt, too. They're like, oh, oh my God, it's going to hurt. It's, yeah, it's not do, fun. Oh, you don't like it? I mean, no, I don't love it at all. It's I started doing my quads because the bigger my upper body gets, the harder it is to reach my ass. Oh, I know. And then you get a cramp. You're trying to <laughs> yeah. go around and it cramps up right here. Yeah. yeah. And I move yep. the whole time. I'm like, yeah. And I get these knots. So I started doing my quads. Yeah. Do you use that? What do you, what size? Are you using a one inch needle? So you go, or are you still using the one and a half? One and a half. I know that's too deep, huh? Well, I'm I mean, going down to my ligament, huh? I thought about that. Well, I know because like, <laughs> I know when you're. Okay, you have ligament quads. Quad, there's I, there's I certain spots like that you can't hit. Spot. I know and I'm like. Oh, uh oh. Yeah, there's a That's there's, not my muscle. The way the way your quad's set up, obviously it looks like, like a hand, right? The yeah. muscles are set up. And you obviously there's certain areas of the quad that you don't want to hit. There's a certain region that is good and yeah. then certain region that you don't want to touch this is like, good right yeah I, i've only done it twice then the third third time i did it, i hit the wrong spot and i couldn't walk for a week i'm like over it so i just kept it in the that's movie. what's been happening on my ass so oh because like you're hitting yeah. that spot and then you get so sore that you can't <laughs> you know even walk. what's funny is so there was this week in brazil and it's like people are like oh my god your ass is massive holy shit but it was because swollen. i had two knots on both side of my ass and it was making it do like this i i got the <laughs> like you just you got, got pumped, pumped yeah <laughs> it was just a temp pump and now i'm like fuck i should do that every time <laughs> Sure, you want the around. hookup for the pump? You yeah. let me, baby. Know. You know it. And you, you can know have it. A, a pumped ass whenever. <laughs> I thought about it too, but I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. Yeah, the second like he gets pumped, is kind of like, this is getting, like, this is yeah. getting too dolly said, for me. Like, nah, that's, that's, <laughs> you're dolling too much right now. I'm not right? dolling at all. All, all, all I'm around is dolls. Right? What do you expect? The shit just rubs off on me. <laughs> They're like, he can't talk about trans subjects. Listen, I've some of these girls that are listening right now, I've been around trans women longer than you've been transitioning. So let's just start there. <laughs> like I've literally lived with trans women for the last four years. That's all I've been around. And gay men. So I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure that my fucking gay for pay, confused straight ass has has uh, clout here to speak on subjects. Well, do you identify as straight? I don't even here's the thing. And I've always said this, I don't fucking care about an identity because I I accept people for who they are and if I connect with you, I connect with you. 
So that's like kind of like pan, right? I was just going to say that. How crazy. Is that what that means? Okay, then here we go, guys. That's literally pan. what pan means. Oh, cool. Then that's who I am. Yeah. That, we just figured out my identity. I'm a pansexual. Like Davin. You know Davin Strong? Davin Strong, yeah. Big the buff. best. He's the nicest guy ever. He identifies as pan. I think a few other people. I think Roman Todd identifies as bi. Uh-huh. Yeah. But he still shoots at trans women also. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like so fluid. It's I mean, which, like, which pan helps with that fluidity. Mm-hmm. I think about like it's like people that are in the industry that are uh, uh, kind of like me. Like there's like Pierce Paris. I don't know if you know Pierce Paris. He's started out as gay for pay. He's a crossover. He's married. He's got two kids. You know what I mean? Uh, Roman Todd married to a female. Now Pierce Paris is somebody that I will dish about. He he pissed me off so bad okay. on Twitter. He's just about the only person. That tell, I think okay, can, do tell. You didn't see what he posted about uh, how people crossover people you so uh-huh. so so you shoot porn for I, I shoot I shoot bi uh, and and uh, gay porn. Okay, so he's talking about you that the studios should disclose that if you've slept with. Men who are positive undetectable recently. They should disclose that to the female stars. But really? Yeah. And he went on this big thing. He doubled down 10 times. People were like, wait, like, but everybody's tested. Everybody's, if you think about it, the woman's tested, the man's tested after he shoots with somebody who's positive undetectable, which by the way, means you're untransmittable. You cannot transmit HIV. If you are undetectable and you're not, your viral load is non-existent, there is is 0% chance. It's like 0.0001% chance of HIV being transmitted. So even with that, he believes that the the girls are entitled to know if a crossover performer Uh has worked with somebody who is undetectable. But I got tested. I, um, that's the first time I heard that. And Pierce is, he's actually, um, He's a coworker, and he's a he's a he's a work friend of mine, and um, that's interesting because I feel like the test is good enough. If I'm tested within my time to shoot, that's gonna tell everything. It doesn't matter who I. Dude, I've he had fe- like female porn stars riled. They up were on all Twitter charming up. They're about, like, yeah, yeah, he, fuck yeah. those guys. Well, they then, can't be having. But then sex the with gays g- were like, "This is crazy. This is da 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 da," which I feel like makes it makes you in a really precarious situation that if, and I've seen a lot of my friends that are straight or pan or bi or whatever, and they're doing the crossover Mm -hmm. and they'll have girls turn them down because they do gay porn. I had that. I had a scene canceled on me at the end of uh, December. And and that's because of the shit like that, that Pierce Paris puts with his 300,000 Twitter followers on Twitter. Right. Um, You know, and it's most straight performers are uneducated about HIV. Yeah. Most straight people, most people that are outside of sex work in general that aren't gay are uneducated about HIV. So you know how we were talking about earlier how I feel about straight people, straight guys in gay porn? Uh-huh. As long as you're like respectful of the culture, Please. I have no problem being gay porn. Hell yeah. Like you're you're filming sex with a man. Don't, That's yeah, if the job. You're a straight you, man, and you're you, good I enough. Mean, you're doing it. You you're allowed a seat at the table, but respect the culture, respect gay people. Don't like, come in. Don't come in with the fucking attitude of like, and with the, all these demands. Like you're choosing to be here, so be accepting and like. Or educate yourself on yes. HIV. Yes. <laughs> it's so educate easy. Educate yourself on if you're in a uh, doing a sexual job. Educate yourself on sexual health of the demographic that you're working with. It's really simple. I was reading. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna to pull it up. But it was a study basically on the transmission of HIV in gay communities versus straight communities. And there's less HIV being transmitted in the gay community as opposed to the straight community now because this fact alone. Because most homosexual identifying men, even my, I was on prep. I'm not anymore. But most are on prep. If they're not, if they're not uh, positive and they're they're undetectable, they're on prep. And so, if you do the math on that, it literally makes it virtually impossible to transmit a disease. If possible, if you're taking prep and you're undetectable, if I'm on prep and you're undetectable, yeah, I'm never going to get HIV. Yeah, and my man here is never going to stop taking his medication because why? 
it keeps him alive. And why? It keeps his job. If he's alive, he has a job he can work. Like, do the math, you guys. Like, someone who's undetectable and on medication in porn is not going to fucking put their job at risk or other people because that's how they make their money. Even just the two test aspect. Yeah. Everybody's getting tested multiple times. Multiple times, swabbed in the yeah. fucking mouth and the butthole. Like, we're doing s- sex workers and. Porn stars especially, we are yeah. so adamant about our sexual health. We're yeah. the most tested. We yeah. know our status at all times. At all times. I know your status. Press on. About CBS. Really? Yeah. That's such a good color. I get so, good. I get so lazy going to the nail salon. I kinda just It works really well for you. I have a whole drawer of just like fifteen blocks of press on <laughs> ready to go when I'm on the color. Hell yeah. And they stay up for like three weeks. But um Yeah. I was gonna ask you, so reading that tweet from Pierce Paris, like, do you agree with that? Obviously not. No, not at all. I mean, I feel like... What's your it, take on that? I feel like it's a homophobic thing to say. Mm-hmm. I feel like... Um, because what he's saying is, is us, us straight people need to be protected from the gay disease, right? So if you're dipping your toes over there, it's just it's very, it's very divisive. It's very homophobic. It's very... Um, well, I mean, you know, it's even though he's in gay porn himself, you think that's homophobic? Hundred thousand percent. I think that, yeah, I think that homophobia can still exist with somebody that does gay porn. Mm-hmm. Definitely, someone, definitely. Someone said that I have internalized homophobia. They said that about me, but with transphobia, which I don't fucking blame them because the shit that I say about trans community is hilarious. Like, <laughs> I sit here and I will fucking rag on the trans community, and they're like, Elena, it's giving very much. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bitch, it, I see why you think that way, but you can't tell me what I'm saying isn't fucking true. Like, it's fucking, like, true, whatever I'm, the hell I'm saying. Like, trannies, a lot of you guys are fucking weird. And it's, I don't know if it's the hormones, but I've met a handful of weird-ass fucking trannies where I'm like, dude, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, no, some dolls can't handle the hormones, that's for sure. That's for sure. And it's like, I'm not even being, like, transphobic because I'll support you all the way. But, dude, you're fucking weird. And, like, I'm saying the funny, (laughs) like, the shit I say, they're all fucking true, bitch. And you're upset because you know it ties to you. Because the bitches that are normal, they're unbothered. They're quiet. They're like, you know what? I I see that. (laughs) But the bitches with the most to say are the ones that I'm talking about. So if the shoe fits, fucking run with it, babe. And and as your fans always say, it's always the bricks that got something to say. Mm -hmm. That's a brick. the brick is like when you're freshly in transition that you're kind of just like, like you're you still like a boy. You're still oh, square you're body. Like brick. But the hormones like, are hitting so hard that you're just like the like this, it's fucking crazy, dude. Like mm-hmm. still looking very fucking hard and um, but full on believing that like the most beautiful woman here exists. I don't know how you deal with it. I have if there's one has- negative comment in 300, I'm like. <laughs> Oh my god, I, am I hate it. Best. Unbothered, dude. This oh, thing, I'm so bothered. The robot is unbothered. He's ah. convinced I'm a robot because like nothing affects me. <laughs> nothing. I'm so like numb. I can't just like, yeah. like nothing affects me. But I, I mean, there are tons of because kind of like, like I said, bad press is good press. They talk all the True. shit, but it's kind oh, of yeah, like dude. it keeps people coming back to talk more shit, and it's kind of like. Whenever you come back to talk more shit, you're watching an ad on my YouTube video and it gets me paid yeah. even more. So please. My whole job is to make people come. So My whole job is to just, if it gets you upset <laughs> and you guys keep coming back to talk shit, that's fine with me too, you guys. Yeah, like, see, I'm not tripping like on a, it. That's like a different, yeah. Yeah. But you guys, we have had a great time. Yay. I love that this wasn't more of like an interview. It's kind of just like a sit this down. Is this is hangout time. This is what I was talking about earlier. I'm like, we need to have a little vibe and just like kick it and talk. And like, it doesn't always have to be like this interview where, you know, because I feel like the girls like that shit too. They're like, why are there men on here though? Why? Because um, okay, most- Okay, Let me clarify that. Yes. So a lot of people that are kind of like, I don't like alpha there. Like it feels weird having a, a cis male in a podcast when there's other dolls. What does he bring to the table? I think it's so off-putting. And so here's, I'll tell you this right now. For times where I have, like, cis males on my show, I will not be able to relate to you in a way that he will be able to relate to you. And so I like having him here because he helps break that barrier between me and you and provides, like, a comfort setting for all of us, you know? Mm -hmm. Same with the dolls. Like, when I interview girls or anyone, he won't be able to relate, but he can also put in an opinion from like a male's perspective and I think that's so important because like if we're always just constantly like hearing one opinion over and over kind of just like oh this is what the girl thinks and it's kind of like it gets boring like it gets repetitive but like 
having like a male's perspective it's kind of just like to me it's kind of like you get to know more of like the other side and i love that so and you've been doing this so long you need to spice it up exactly i've been interviewing girls already and it's kind of like my old podcast was all doll like fixated but now this is kind of like i want to have i want it to be inclusive to like male and female and so by doing that it's better to have a male co-host as well when i ha- when there are times where i do have cis males he'll be able to relate and break that barrier and when i do have dolls I'll be able to really and break that barrier for him as well. Right. So I feel like having two perspectives on certain on both gender just makes it even better. But people are just they're not they're never too happy with anything. Everybody so. always has something to say. But the best part is is all the comments are the best for me because the best part when someone has some shit to say, it's always like, oh, at one hour and five minutes, I'm like, you watch the whole fucking thing. So whether you hate it or love it, you still watch this. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, that was the Bo Butler episode. Before it goes, anything you want to plug? Yeah. Give your oh, my OnlyFans. Yeah, OnlyFans.com slash Bo Butler XXX. My, uh, you can get all my links at Bo Butler XXX.com. Perfect. Is there anything you want to plug? Um, he's gonna plug me right now. I'm gonna plug Perfect. him. Perfect. So if you guys want to see that happening, it will already be linked Links in the OnlyFans be, yep. down below, you guys. But thank you so much for watching. Thank yeah, you, Bo yeah, Butler, yeah. for coming thank on. You. And until my the next best. episode, you guys, let's get demonetized.